Hi guys, welcome to Dhan. Going digital is no longer a trend, it's a necessity. Right from grocery shopping to sending money to your family, everything can be done online. The key enabler of digital money is technology, especially in India where UPI is used by everyone for everything. Keeping with the theme, the RPI has another spanner in the works in the form of the digital rupee. But how is it even different from UPI or even cryptocurrency? Let's see. Now let's answer the question. What is CBDC digital rupee? As interesting as it may sound, a central bank digital rupee is just like UPI but much simpler, more sophisticated and techy. How? When you transfer money to someone via UPI, you have to send it through the bank and it's a bank transaction. But in the case of e-rupee, you don't need banks at all. In fact, you can either transfer money to another account or as the papers say, imagine a UPI system where CBDC is transacted instead of bank balances as if cash is handed over the need for interbank settlement disappears. If you too are wondering how much an e-rupee costs, the government is planning to introduce it one is to one. That is one rupee will be equal to one e-rupee. If it's not like UPI and works directly, how does it differ from cryptocurrency? And are they the same? So what exactly is the difference between digital currency and cryptocurrency? If you have ever noticed our currency note, it states or promises that RBI will pay whoever is the bearer of a note a sum of rupees XX. It is a legal tender that is can be used to pay for any transaction in India. Each currency note is essentially a claim on the RBI. Central bank digital currency states the same but in a digital form. Similarly, RPI ensures that the CBDC digital rupee stores a similar value and is backed by the RPI as well. In simple terms, it's a rupee note, but in a digital format. So why would RPI launch CBDC as much of the complexity has already been taken care of by UPI? So why is RPI thinking of launching the digital rupee? CBDC digital rupee has multiple use cases and there are multiple reasons why CBDC can be helpful for the Indian economy. Number one, programmable payments or DBT. Programmable money is without a doubt one of the biggest buzzwords in the blockchain world. Despite the fact that everyone seems to talk about it, we lack a clear definition and hence a common understanding of it. The term programmable payments means payments that are automatically executed once certain conditions are met. These payments are automated and follow predetermined logic. Programmable payments already exist in today's banking system. For example, in the form of standing orders and direct debits. But now this can be used in different daily life scenarios like subsidies for sectors like agriculture, where subsidies for fertilizer could be transferred via the CBDC route. This CBDC could only be accepted at authorized fertilizer outlets, ensuring there is minimal leakage in the subsidy program. Moreover, programmable payments can also be used in the industrial supply chain ecosystem by organizations for employees' expenditure and more. Number two. Cross-border transactions. CBDs could be used for faster cross-border remittance payments. With major economies of the world, India could create the necessary infrastructure and arrangements for CBDC transfer and conversion. Let's understand this with a recent example. The sanctions imposed on Russia after the invasion of Ukraine were multiple. Russian participants were removed from SWIFT, the dollar payment network, etc. The purchase of Russian debt was also restricted, which cuts Russia off from the financial markets. Under these sanctions, the USA, UK and EU froze half of these reserves. A significant chunk of our own reserves in dollars and gold are held overseas. Such cases create uncomfortable situation where if India does something that the West doesn't like, the financial system may collapse. In this case, CBDC remittances could happen in real time, rapidly reducing the time required for the payment to be received by the intended receiver. Apart from transacting with the economy, CBDC can also be used for retail payments. A CBDC could also offer offline payments as part of its universal access attributes. Retail CBDC distributed by the RBI and commercial banks would have to be held in electronic wallets or accounts by their end users. This would enable payment means between the following. A. B2B. Here businesses can exchange CBDC between their corporate account digital wallets. B. C2C. Consumers can exchange CBDC between their digital wallets. C. C2B. Consumers can use CBDC to pay for products and services. Does this concept sound similar to cryptocurrencies? 
or should I say cryptocurrency? If yes, what's the difference and why not just use cryptocurrency? Why can't call it cryptocurrency as it does not come with any underlying claim to any asset? Its value is based entirely on public perception or speculation. Unlike cryptocurrencies where Elon Musk can take your coin to the moon and back to earth, the value of CBDC remains stable. Other cons that crypto has are illegal transactions and multiple instances of fraud. But a currency with the backing of a central bank like RBI is much safer. e rupee can also be exchanged for rupee. Found this insightful? Keep on following us for more.